Hi, everybody. My name is Tomohito Yamada. I'm working at the Department of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering. My research field is hydrometeorology. Today, I would like to talk about water-related issues. Titles is Along with Water. Without uh, considering the water, we cannot explain why human being has developed its own civilization and cultures. The, for example, in Egypt, civilization is originated about 5,000 years scale at the uh, lower Nile River basin. Nile River brought rich soil to that area every year, and the people could manage and uh, sustain the uh, agriculture activities as well as our water resources management. In Sichuan province in China, the huge irrigation facility was constructed 2,000 years ago. Surprisingly, even now, that irrigation facility is indispensable to water resources management in that area. In Japan, the flood controlling management is called as chisui in Japanese language. The chisui includes not only flood controlling itself, but also conserving environment, including forests and uh, mountains in each river basin. Let me explain one achievement by Japanese civil engineers here in Hokkaido, Japan. In Hokkaido, the longest river is named Ishikari River. In this river basin, covered with peatland, had often flooding every year by snow melt runoff in early spring and severe rainfall in summertime. People had a dream to mitigate flood risk in this river basin, as well as changing land use for better agriculture activities. Just 100 years ago, one flood prevention project was launched, and the total length of the river was 20% shortened, and drainage channels are constructed in the lower river basin to decrease groundwater level. By those achievements, now Ishikari River Basin became one of the most important granary in Japan. And the population here increased, was increased from 300,000 to 3 million within these 100 years. Here, let me explain global water accessibility story. Our planet Earth is sometimes called as water planet. However, the available fresh water is only 2.5% in total water. And global water population has been rapidly increased from last century. It means our human being has to share the limited water with 7 billion people at the current situation. Scarcity of water resources can be estimated using the water stress index. As you can see in these figures, there is a large variety of water stress among whole nations. High water stress is mainly distributed in arid and semi-arid regions with high dense population density. And every day, water is traded virtually traded through agriculture and industrial products among whole nations. From, the, from the viewpoint of water resources, such virtually traded water is trying to mitigate the unbalanced water stress among the nations. 
The, now, researchers saying that the number of the country under high water stress will be increased, particularly where the population will also be increased. Here, let me show you one example, one big fl flooding, which occurred in Chao Phraya River Basin in Thailand last year. In this river basin, generally one or two typhoons attack Thailand every year in the 30 years. However, last year, totally five tropical depressions, including typhoon, affected this river basin and brought huge, huge floods. That flood continued more than two months, and some regions are inundated, even in the, the beginning of dry season, November. Not only Thailand, but also many other countries received huge damage in terms of industry, because there are many industrial facili facilities and the factories are located in Chao Phraya River Basin. That's why this flood event told us how the water crisis is borderless among the nations. Now, Thai and Japanese researchers are trying to mitigate flood risk for the future in this river basin by sharing our knowledge and technology. So well-balanced water resources is a target for us. So that well-balanced water resources can be discussed both in temporal and spatial scales. If the rainfall is intensified with very small time scale in the, look, in the small spatial scale, there is a high risk of flash floods due to torrential downpour. If the rainfall continues more longer time scale and spatial scale, longer, uh, larger spatial scale, the severity of big floods will be higher, like the case in Thailand last year. On the other hand, the shortage of rainfall continues the spatially and the longer time scale. There is a high risk for the drought. The United States this year, it was, it was recorded the historical drought. This affected the agricultural trading especially for wheat and corn. So under this too much and too little water situation, we have to find a solution to obtain well-balanced water resources as well as mitigating the severe weather, flood and drought. Furthermore, well-balanced water resources highly depends on the each river basin because the climate, our human activities, including culture and lifestyles, are totally different. Then, how can we predict the future? How can we understand our global hydrological cycle? This figure shows global water budget, annual, annual precipitation, evapotranspiration, river runoff, and other hydrological variables are estimated. You may have seen similar figures on your textbooks. However, obtaining the high accurate hydrological variable itself is challenging in our field. Let me explain how we can quantify hydrological variables. From the middle of the 20th century, meteorologists, oceanographers, and hydrologists have tried to develop global climate model which simulate global circulation numerically. Global climate models are generally used for daily weather forecasts and long-term climate simulations associated with climate change issues on the high-performance supercomputers. However, as you know, Predicting the future itself is quite a challenging issue. 
One of the reasons can be seen relating to atmospheric memory storage. This is the result by forecast simulation with slightly different atmospheric initial conditions. All of the, si all of the simulations showed very similar behavior during the first 10 days. However, after that certain period, they showed totally different behavior. Because of the, that is caused by nonlinear characteristics of the atmosphere and complex interaction system among land, atmosphere, and ocean, oceans. So how can we predict more accurate hydrological cycles? We have to gather various kinds of global environmental data sets. Now, more than 100 satellites are circulating our planet and observing our global environment. Now it became possible to observe clouds, soil moisture, vegetation, ice, and sea surface conditions. Furthermore, it also became possible to measure precipitation itself globally. By those activities, enable us to discuss hydrological cycle even in engaged river basin. As an example, by combining development global climate models and global environmental data sets by remote sensing, we'd like, I'd like to show you one example for West African monsoon. In this case, using realistic soil moisture state help, helping, is helping to simulate the onset of West African monsoon in, in the global climate models. In addition to the development of global climate models and uh, huge global environmental data set by remote sensing, we have to continue in, in situ observation. Still, in situ observation is a lack in the global scale. In situ observation can be used to validate the results of, of simulated model, uh, model simulations and uh, global, global environmental data set by satellite. Of course, one person cannot observe everywhere in the world. Therefore, we have to share hydrological data set. This simple thing has not been achieved yet. Anyhow, combining global climate model development, global environmental data set, including in situ observation, accuracy of hydrological predictions has been improved in the 30 years. Let me focus on more longer time scale. This animation shows global average temperature distribution from 1950 to the recent years. As you can easily understand, the distribution of the temperature field has been shifted both mean state and the tail Mean state indicates the climatological mean, and the tail indicates extreme weather, hot and dry conditions. The difficult thing is we have to find the solution for stable water resources and mitigating the severe weather risks under the condition that climatology itself is shifting. This is the point of this presentation. So here, there is another question. Does our human being affect global hydrological cycle or not? Recently, hydrologists have developed land surface model, including a human impact module, such as irrigation and possible groundwater pumping. 
focusing on sea level rise story in global scale, the researcher is saying that 1.8 millimeter sea level is rising every year due to snow ice melting and oceans thermal expansions associated with temperature increase. The, however, the sea level, sea level rise and those input factors are not balanced and conserved, maybe due to lack of observation. In contrast, very recent paper suggests that the pumping fossil groundwater is one of the main contributors increasing sea level in addition to snow ice melting and ocean thermal expansion. Pumping groundwater itself is, is helping to mitigate water stress in a global scale. At the same time, the pumping the groundwater from the deep layer is adding additional water into the global hydrological cycles. There are positive and negative side in this story. Under these very difficult conditions, we have to find the solution to obtain the water resources development and mitigate severe weather risks. I'm very looking forward to working with you to tackle this issue in this beautiful Hokkaido, Japan. Thank you very much.